Can ChatGTP replace programmers and writers? Today I'm going to show you what it can do. Hello, Russell here for This Week in IT, where we take a look at tech issues that matter to you. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on our weekly uploads. So ChatGTP is a new tool that's currently available in Preview that is basically an advanced chat bot based on artificial intelligence and machine learning. ChatGTP is an evolution of GPT-3 from the OpenAI research project. Now this new version of the tool is basically available for you just to test and try at the moment. And it's been trained on a set of data, on a very large set of data of course, that only goes up to 2021. So you can't ask it questions about something that's current. So for instance I tried to ask it what do you think about Windows 11 and it told me that Windows 10 is the latest version available of Windows, which of course we know at this moment in time not to be true. So there's a limit to what you can do with it at the moment. It's still in a kind of a trial phase. And I know that OpenAI have had problems scaling their systems to give people access. Of course, there was such a huge amount of interest in it that at the moment it's actually closed for new signups. But because I signed up to it a couple of weeks ago, I'm lucky to still have access. And I can show you a little of what it can do in this video. And I think you'll be quite impressed. So why all the fuss about this particular release? Now, GPT-3 was quite impressive in itself, but this new version is an upgrade and basically it, of course, tends to be more focused on an interactive chat experience. So you can have a whole conversation with it, it can admit its mistakes, and the whole idea of this is to make it a more interactive tool. Now the reason this has been so much in the press recently is because of the results that it gives. So you may have seen people like Jeffrey Snover and other people who are well known in the programming and scripting space using ChatGTP to basically create blocks of code that might otherwise have required somebody with knowledge of PowerShell or whatever other programming language. So I was able to use it to generate some content, you know, something that we might use on Petri, for instance, to generate some PowerShell code. And I was quite impressed with the results. Sometimes asking it, you know, reasonably difficult questions and it being able to give a decent answer. Of course, there are some advantages to this that is able to write, you know, really coherent, grammatically correct English. It doesn't require any editing, but you do need to understand that sometimes the results are not always accurate. So you need to fact check what it's come back with, and you can even challenge it and tell it that it's wrong and it will admit its mistakes. So let's have a look at a couple of examples. So I was asking it a few questions, for instance, what is DHCP? Can you give me a, an you know, explanation of what DHCP is? And it was able to do that in a very, you know, succinct way. Now, if you want more details, then you need to give it more input. So if I want more details about exactly how DHCP works, then I need to ask it a very specific question. I was also able to ask it, you know, a specific question about Active Directory, which is something that beginners always wonder, do you need to have a forest root domain? Now, many years ago, people always did this, even though Microsoft didn't always recommend it, it depended on the situation and what exactly you want to do with Active Directory. And in general, it's not required. But I was just interested to see what chat GTP would come back as an answer. And the answer was pretty good. It could have given a little bit more explanation about when you would want to deploy a, a forest root domain. It didn't quite go into that detail, but you know, you could ask it that question, you know, in what scenarios would you need to deploy a forest root? I was also able to ask it, you know, can you create a PowerShell script that can download and install 7-zip? And it was able to do that, no sweat. Of course, it's relatively simple. So this begs the question, of course, would any of this actually be useful in the real world? Would it be able to replace writers, for instance? Would it be able to replace programmers? Well, of course, there are always issues, both technical and ethical, with this kind of thing. So let's take it from my point of view. So I'm editor of the Petri IT knowledge base, and we have great writers that we work with producing, you know, how-to documentation, opinion pieces, and news, 
and you know could we replace those people with artificial intelligence you know would we even want to do that and the answer of course is no and there are a couple of reasons for that first thing is that chat gpt doesn't deal with up-to-date information so you know we can't use it to report on the news for instance we couldn't use it to create an entire news article because it just doesn't have an up-to-date data set the second reason that we couldn't use it, and probably the biggest reason, is that you know this is something ethical because we want to provide value, we want to provide real-world opinions and experience, and of course ChatGPT can't really do that at the moment. The other reason is that Google bans all content that has been automatically generated, with a couple of exceptions. So could you, you know, use ChatGPT to create an entire article and upload it to Google and still expect to be indexed? The answer is, well, you could, but it's against Google's guidelines and their rules and regulations. And you know, from a technical point of view, they don't allow it. What they do allow, for instance, is for you to use artificial intelligence to create a meta description for your article. So there are some places within that field, you know, where you know our artificial intelligence can help you to kind of get started with your content, but not to actually create the content for you. Now, in terms of programming, what this can do at the moment is to create short you know, blocks of code. So it might be able to create a function, for instance, that you might use to do something specific within your software application. But I don't think that chat GPT is going to you know, suddenly be a threat to programmers tomorrow or even in the next few years. You know, programmers are still going to be required to do that creative thinking that's really required to put a whole software application together and to join all those pieces together. Now, could something that's powered by chat GPT become a really valuable tool for programmers you know, in the next few years? I think absolutely yes. I mean, we're already seeing that kind of thing happen, you know, with the tools that Microsoft has built into GitHub Copilots, you know, although it's been relatively controversial, you know, chat GPT could be used to produce a more advanced version of that that doesn't just lift other people's code and, you know, that's potentially a copyright issue. But, you know, is this going to replace writers? Is it going to replace programmers? Of course not, at least not right at this point in time. But having said all of that, it's a really impressive technology. It's exciting. I'm really glad to see this happening. It opens all sorts of possibilities for us to be able to focus more on the creative aspects of what we do, whether you're a content creator, whether you're a programmer, rather than having to deal with all those humdrum things that, you know, maybe could be done by a machine. For instance, if you're a writer, you might use chat and GPT as a research tool. So you're not actually using the copy that it produces, maybe you need to find out the answer to a question. Of course, programmers very commonly use Google to find pieces of code. I mean, why would you reinvent the wheel if you need to do something? If you know that piece of code is already out there, you can just Google it and find something and just adapt it for your needs. And maybe ChatGPT, of course, can help you to solve some problems that otherwise would just be very time consuming and then plug them into your software project. So I think it's really exciting from those points of view. So let me know what you think of ChatGPT in the comments below if you've had a chance to play around with it. If you haven't, then you can go and sign up and you'll be essentially added to a waiting list and they will let you know when it's available. If you found this video useful, then please give it a like because it really helps it to be seen by more people on YouTube and that really helps me out. And I'm going to put another video up on the screen now that you might find interesting, so please check that out and I will see you next time.